Hi, I'm Sarah with MyCollegesAndCareers.com and today on the Education and Career channel we're going to be exploring the topic of how to create an effective workspace for students on a budget. Today we have the pleasure of having with us Shane Inman who's an interior designer from Traverse City, Michigan. Welcome Shane, it's great to have you with us today. Good afternoon, thank you very much. Excellent. Now before we jump in, Shane, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into your industry? Sure. The name of my company is the Inman Company, and we practice residential and commercial interior design. I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from Michigan State University in 1997. I've been practicing ever since. Fantastic. I started my business in 2006, so we're almost five years old. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And we do very, very fine luxury homes here uh, in a very tucked away part of Michigan on Lake Michigan. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Excellent. We enjoy it very much. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Well, and I love all this natural light that you have coming through the windows. It's perfect. <laughs> Thanks. So why don't we just jump in. Shane, what suggestions do you have for students when they're creating a workspace, particularly those who have very limited space on their hands? Sure, that's a very good question. Creativity is very important because as you know, we are selling the intangibles. We don't have a product to sell, we're selling ourselves. Yes. So organization would be the number one thing that you can have and hold on to. Okay. Everybody wants to know that when they do hire you, that their project is going to be very well organized. So for you to have a very well organized space sets the tone to any potential clients or industry partners. So I would say filing cabinets are a must and they should be meticulously organized. Okay. I always practice with all of my employees to put back everything immediately after use. So nothing is ever laying around. And always to have a clean desktop. I think that's very important. The second thing that I would recommend is lighting. You should have really good lighting, direct lighting and task lighting. If you're an unfortunate individual that has to work in a systems furniture setting where it's all fluorescent lighting, then I'd get a desk light. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing for this suggestion would be cleanliness. I think cleanliness is everything. Keep your workstation clean. I think it also sets positive energy for not even yourself, but those around you. Right. Right. Those are great suggestions. And it certainly seems like something that you live as I see your space a little bit in the background. Yes. Uh, we are very meticulous here. Everything must be cleaned all the time. Excellent. Well, and yeah. I had a photo of one of either your office or one of the offices that you created. And something that I noticed, Shane, was how everything had, had its place. There was no yes. clutter. There was no loose papers. Everything, mm -hmm. like you said, was meticulous. So sure. students have all of these papers, all of these books, and it can overwhelm and just overtake a space. What suggestions do you have specifically for organization? Well, for organization, I believe that there's two things that you can do. You can store less, and you can actually rent books and documents versus buying them. Good idea. It's also really good for the environment. I say the more that you can scan and put into your to your computer uh -huh. and the more you actually have to store is the best. This is the way that all firms are going to legal, all corporations. So when you read a document, when you're finished with it, don't save it. If you need to save it, scan it and then put it in what we refer to as the circular file, which used to be the trash, but now of course it's recycling. <laughs> of course. Yeah, so the more you recycle documents, the less you have to store. If you do need to store documents, then again, a meticulous filing cabinet is a must in any company. And then if you do need to store books, I do understand that we have a, that some individuals do need resource documents and books to look at every day, such as we do here at our firm. Right. And the best way to do this, I find, is upright and in alphabetical order. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. Algebra followed by English with exactly. calculus in between, right? Sure, everything everything that you're teaching yourself in in college or at any at any educational institution is something that you're going to train yourself to follow through for the rest of your life. Right. And the majority of people are very impressed by organization. It's just a small thing that you can do to get a foot up on your competition. Great. Life skills, mm -hmm. right? They'll be able to yes. have it for years to come. Life skills. 
Wonderful. So what about concentration? When you're sitting there, you can have your meticulous desk, but what if, what if they're just losing it while they're trying to study? Are there some things that you can bring as an interior designer to help aid the concentration process? Yes, that's a very good question. I get asked that a lot when we do commercial design. Okay. There are a lot of statistics that are that are shown for color therapy. There's colors that make you heal faster. There's colors that that make you feel more cheery and bright. A lot of them are used in in hospitality, such as red makes you hungry. A lot of them are used in healthcare, where yellows make you feel more jaundiced and not that well, where blues imitate the sky and make you feel healthier. Right. So what I would say is that there's two different types of people, and there's two different types of work being performed. So there's introverts and there's extroverts. Right. And then there's, there's two different types of work being performed. So some people need to be inspired to feel creative. And then there's some people that need to focus. So the people doing algebra and practicing accounting, book work, they need to focus. Right. People such as designers and people in TV and things of that nature, they need to be inspired and they need to have creative ideas. So it, extroverts need more muted colors. Okay. Uh, of the primary colors. Introverts need more vibrant colors. They like fluorescence, they like reds, blues, really? greens. So again, the extroverts enjoy those too, but more muted selections of those. How interesting. Yes. That's fascinating. So I would say any colors that you bring in are really good to, to keep your focus. They have to be soothing to you or inspiring to you. And my tip would be to don't be scared to repaint a lot. So repaint your office or your space every year, every six months. It's a very practical and inexpensive way to uh, keep yourself inspired and concentrated. Oh, absolutely. And then it feels new. And something yes. about that new feeling helps you to just be more present, I think. Yes, that is true. Excellent. So, um, Let's see, how can students bring their personality into their space and have a little piece of them in this in the study area while they're working? Well, bringing personality into the space is really important, no matter if it's a study space while you're at, while you're at college uh -huh. or if it's your office while you're working for a corporation or it's your own home office. Right. Inviting people in and what you do want to do is you want to express a little bit of yourself. I think much like yourself, you have a FICA tree in the background and it may be artificial. Yeah, which is? <laughs> yeah, big no-no. <laughs> so I think bringing plants in is very good and live plants is wonderful. I think it's the exchange of energy between two living to living bodies that is really uplifting and plus it's something that you take care of on an everyday basis. Right. I also think it's great to bring in your favorite colors. Anything that you wanted, any color that you like and that you feel inspires you is really great to do. Excellent. And I think it's nice to have personal pictures. Um, not too many because you don't want to clutter up a desk. And then in my office we do a lot of personal quotes, things that inspire us. And those are really nice. People like to read those when they come in. It's kind of like things, you know, uh, on the refrigerator when yes. you walk into somebody's home. It's something to look at. You want people to look at. That's exactly what I was just thinking of. I've got some fun quotes uh -huh. <laughs> sticking yeah. on my fridge. They not only inspire us, but they're really nice for people to see, too. And they're things that we live by. And uh, they also show good character. Wonderful. Those are great suggestions. So a little bit, but not too much, right? Exactly. Everything in moderation. Yes. Well, <laughs> Shane, I think it's so fascinating that you as a uh, male are part of this industry because there's so, I don't want to, you know, down on men or anything, but there's so few men that care about this type of uh, a topic, right? Sure. Being aware and um, cognizant and careful about their space. So from a male sure. perspective, why is that important, especially for men? Well, it's very important because a lot of the decisions in this day and age are made by the female market. Uh, real estate, anything to have to do with housing, home improvement. I mean, look at Home Depot, for, a, for example. I mean, they put, I think, uh, $500 million into, or it could even be $50 billion 
You'd have to have fact check around that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, to revamp all of their stores across the United States to make them more female friendly. Mm -hmm. I think taking care of yourself and taking care of your space and having pride and ownership is not, is very important these days. We try to buy once and not and try to help the environment and not keep buying things and throwing them out. So I believe if you buy good construction and quality things, um, you can take care of them and you can have them for a lifetime. And that means you know keeping them clean and everything has their place. And again, if you're running a business, people appreciate this. Right. And mm -hmm. the world appreciates it at the yes, end of the day, right? Yes, absolutely. We must make the world a better looking place. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> yes. I love it. Well, Shane, you've had such wonderful suggestions. I, they're great. And, and I hope that um, both myself as well as those that are listening will be able to take some of these to heart and really to apply them. So, um, if you'd like to stay in touch with Shane, you can visit him online. His website is www.theinmancompany.com. That's the I N M A N company.com. His blog is theinmancompany.com forward slash blog. And you can also find him on Twitter at Shane Inman. So thank you so much. Again, Shane, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today. And thank you so much, Sarah. It was a great opportunity, and I, I loved doing this. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank you. Well, I'm Sarah with MyCollegesAndCareers.com, and we'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Education and Career channel today. Stay tuned for more great information for students from MyCollegesAndCareers.com.